Zaku Baruch, good morning. We're going to now deal with, very quickly, the different cosmetic items that do or do not need kosher for Passover signs for Pesach. The Sephardic law is a lot more lenient in this, in this uh, matter rather than Ashkenazim. Years ago, um, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, the leading uh, Ashkenaz Orthodox rabbi of the United States, came out with a hidush, with a novelty which turned out to be a very big stringency. He said any item that has ethanol, which is any type of alcohol that is in the ingredients of the item, even if it's being a cosmetic item, even though that it is a non-edible item, since in liquid form, not in solid form, in liquid form, it could still be decomposed and uh, breaking down at the compounds and that alcohol could still be found, which could be hametz. Therefore, he was of the opinion that any liquid item, even though now it's not a edible item, is still a chshash of hametz. It's a doubt that it's hametz and they would not use it. So that would only be for liquid items. That is the Ashkenaz approach. Many Ashkenazim are stringent with that. The Sephardi approach is we say no. If it's not edible, it's not edible. We said crumbs of food, even though it's not considered food, it's considered garbage, it's considered dust of the earth. But since it's not disqualified for eating, we just wouldn't ever eat it. But when that falls into or gets mixed into food, then that makes the mixture chametz. But when you have something which is rendered completely non-edible, for example, if you would take uh, maybe a Cheerio that's been in the dishwasher five times, and then you take it out, and it's been washed and soaked so many times, that now is rendered not edible. <coughs> That's an example of something which is not edible. Now, we are of the opinion that whenever there is a cosmetic item, even if there is ethanol inside, we are allowed to use it on Pesach. This goes for cologne, this goes for soaps, this goes for any other type of cosmetics, uh, detergent, dishwasher soap, all of these things we're not stringent on. I will tell you one place where we're stringent on, but more for a practical reason, and it's not really applicable so much towards men, and that is lipstick. I hope it's not applicable towards men, okay? <laughs> lipstick, lip balm, very good, thank you, Joel. Lip balm is where it's also applicable. Okay, so it's applicable for men. Lip balm and lipstick, and lipstick even though they have flavor, that's not considered edible. Nobody over two years old opens up lipstick or lip balm and starts eating it, okay? Little kids do anything. But very good. Lip balm that has even flavor, one is allowed to use without a kosher for Passover sign. Unless they're specifically buying it because they know that there is a chametz ingredient in there and they want to eat it and they have an intention for that, which that's never the case. What we do need to discuss is one would need to use a brand new lip balm for Pesach and brand new lipstick for, lip, for, for Pesach. Because lip balm and lipstick go on a place where we eat. Who knows that when I finished eating my sandwich, I didn't put lip balm on. Or when a woman finished eating some type of chametz, a cookie, whatever it is, she didn't put the lipstick on. And now lips, and now there could be chametz, and this is a valid, valid concern, could be chametz on the lipstick or the lip balm. So therefore the tradition is to buy always new lipstick and new lip balm for Pesach. Now if push comes to shove and you didn't do so, you could cut off the tip of it, and then you have it, it's as if it's renewed. That's when it comes to lipstick. When it comes to um, toothpaste, okay, according to the letter of the law, toothpaste, any toothpaste can use. I will tell you though, that along everybody, meaning uh, the, 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 if you want to say 99% of Jews, make sure that they use toothpaste that is checked, that it is not having chametz inside. The difference being, is now you're entering something into your mouth. <coughs> There's one difference of rubbing uh, soap, cologne, lipstick, lip balm, any type of those things are all on the exterior. But once something's entering our mouths on Pesach, 
we are more stringent. So therefore, personally, I, I, I always say, and this is what we do at home, we make sure to get toothpaste that is on the list of kosher for Passover. Many of the toothpastes we already use are kosher for Passover. Um, absolutely needed, and this is not a stringency, this is an absolute must, new toothbrush is needed for the beginning of Pesach. So if you just changed your toothbrush last week, well, you're going to still have to get another one. Okay, so new toothbrush is absolutely necessary. Kosher for Passover toothpaste or pa a toothpaste this is, that's on the uh, kosher Passover lists, even though they don't have an OUP, is highly, highly recommended. I would say almost ob obligated at this point. When it comes to other cosmetic items besides for lipstick and lip balm, chofshi, absolutely no problem to be used. Any other questions we will take later. We are now on page 647 in the white sidurim. 647 in the in the uh, sidurim. We are we are yom hashishi for the nasi. This morning nasi is for the tribe of God. For the tribe of God. Bayom hashishi nasi libne God. El yasaf ben deuel korbano karat kesef ahad sheloshim. Zekorban <laughs> Nuni <laughs> Al <laughs> 